Do you know how memory is managed on a computer? Or if I told you, you could harness the power of that knowledge to write a way better code. In this video, I'll dive deep into how memory is managed on a computer while coding my own memory management unit. And by the end of the video, you will see one, how the memory is managed on a computer, and two, how it's a life-changing thing to programmers to know that. But what is an MMU? You're not gonna believe where I found the answer. Remember those old consoles? I used to have a Sega Genesis. Do you see the answer? You see that crack? That's where the answer is. to another game you had to take the card out and put another card from another game the code to every program on your computer is in your ssd you don't have to take the ssd out and put another ssd in there's no mmu in there but there's mmu in there the evolution of a programmer. Okay, through an SSH tunnel, I have access to my computer in my room. I'm going to show you two different source codes, and you tell me which one is more advanced. This one is the source code to my OS. That one is a piece of code from my blog. Here, we got a bunch of imports from third-party libraries. On my OS, though, we've got one include, mmu.header. Okay, my point is this. That one would never hurt you, and it's very easy to use. But that one might hurt you. Everybody should learn C and assembly. We'll start with those two. Right, like, assembly? Yeah. If you can't code an assembly, you don't know what the computer's doing. So it's time to actually... The simplest format is that you have two different processes. If you put program number one here, you have to remember that you put it here. There has to be some sort of rule for you to know that program number one is always here. Program number two is always there. <laughs> shit, 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 stop. I just crashed my OS because I'm not using any technique to write my MMU. It's just simply dedicating pieces of memory to each process. You can only run 10 processes. And if you declare too many variables, that happens. To fix that, we need this. You cannot possibly put all the chapters on a book in a single page. You create a table of contents. And what that essentially does is that it converts the name of the chapter to the page that that chapter is on. You can do the same thing with memory, it's called paging. You have the address of the table of content, you look it up, that's an address in the memory. And that's where you put your program. set the stack pointer. Now if we look at the memory, we should see a bunch of ones. I don't think it worked. Whoa. Oh, I was looking for the error for the longest amount of time. Do you want to see what it was? I'm setting the stack pointer to end. End here is at the end of my code. But the stack pointer should be pointing at the end of the memory. Ready? Hey! It's full of ones. Hell yeah. Woo. But I stare at a screen for work and I stare at a screen for my side hustle. 
and then after all that's done, I stare at a screen as a hobby to watch some shows and stuff. Whenever I freak out about that, I come outside, I stare at my screen on my laptop while being outside. In the beginning of the video, I made you a promise. I told you that you're gonna be a better programmer after watching this video. But how does knowing all the stuff that I explained to you make you a better programmer? Let me show you. So imagine you're running code on your server. In its busiest day, 10 users will be running your code concurrently. But what if you want to keep your expenses very low by using a server machine that's not that powerful and at the same time handle a million concurrent users? That is when you need to understand memory management. So if you understand paging, and if you understand how stack is different than memory allocation using heap, and how switching from one process to another affects your program. You can write code in any language in such a way that's gonna minimize the time spent by the kernel to swap contacts and move stuff around in the memory. That is as detailed as I could be in one video. You just need to code it yourself to understand it better. If you don't know how, I'm working on this course called Core Layer. Check out corelayer.pro. It's not ready yet, and me coding all this stuff is my attempt to document everything for this course. The course is gonna be super detailed though. The first module is gonna be ready very soon. If you are signed up on my website, as soon as the first module is ready, you're gonna get an email. If you liked the video, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel.